wrong side. this out with the, the camera in my hand okay so and unboxing videos are always pretty fun to watch for a lot of people so I uh, I thought I what a good way to start off the content of this this channel so there um, there came an opportunity to by the way I'm not a collector per se and I'm not a full full-time vendor or broker of Atari parts or, or Atari uh, cartridges. Uh, I prefer the 2600. Kind of a collector. I like tinkering. I'm right in the middle of everything. And I don't like um, I don't like people that really get into this for a profit per se. But let's be honest, we you know, sometimes this hobby can get expensive. So you got to fund it the best way you can and to avoid getting um, diving too much in the household finances what I've done over the years is I've bought and sold have bought old Atari 2600s uh, rehabbed them and sold them on uh, locally here here where I live and uh, I haven't made a huge profit but I've had enough to just continually reinvest in the hobby and do it a slow pace uh, so it's a way of funding the hobby without really diving too much into the uh, household finances my uh, my hot button is really the consoles themselves, buying them, rehabbing them, and, and selling them with a few cartridges uh, locally. Um, so it's, it's, I don't do it for the money. I do it just to self-fund the hobby. But uh, there was an opportunity that came up on my local Facebook feed, Marketplace, and I, I had to share it. Um, I'm not going to share the price I paid, but I was looking through the ad, uh, the Facebook ad, and there was a you know gentleman offering two Ataris, uh, unknown condition uh he hadn't powered them on he hadn't time to test them and he had a whole bunch of joysticks so this was a i believe it's a uh vader and i believe it's a wood grain i don't even remember uh, we're going to find out together though because we're going to unbox this um, um i have not cracked open this box other than to take a quick peek when i was buying it uh, that indeed all the items were in there. Looks like there's two Ataris at the bottom. There's a bunch of joysticks and there's a load of cartridges in here. Um, but I don't know which ones they are. So it's a phenomenal opportunity to, to unbox it and you can be surprised with me. It might be all common cartridges. It, that's okay. There might be 96 combats or 96 asteroids or 96 something super common. But the reality is you can still... Uh, sell those at a decent price and uh, fund your hobby uh, like I'm doing. But there could be some good stuff in here and we'll, we'll take a look. Um, so we probably should just get right to it and see what we have in here. Um, I'm going to have to do this one-handed. I'll share some of my insights and hopefully you don't mind. Uh, by the way, that, that sign wasn't, uh, as you noticed from the prior video, I, that didn't come with it. I call it the bucket of Atari here. So let's get rid of that. Let's see what we get. All right, so cartridges are all on top. I think uh, what I'm going to do is just start thumbing through these cartridges on camera and giving my review and input. And we could probably, once we work our way down the cartridges and through the joysticks, we could, uh, into the units, uh, we could probably wrap up this video and uh, or, and then we can have a separate video on actually the testing because I don't know if any of these work. So see a lot of common goodness, which is fine. Uh, a lot of great stuff in common. So the oh, oh but see, this is the ultimate common combat, but it is a uh, original numbered labeled one. Um, so I can I don't consider this rare. But I do consider this some sort of collectible, and this might be uh, might be worth something to someone else. So I'll put that in one pile. Um, now here's your true, here's your true common uh, a combat with the the photo. Uh, to, you know, post in the comments if you know what the exact description of these types of joist, uh, excuse me, these cartridges are. I don't know what to call this type of cartridge. I just know it's got the modern like 80 to 81 lettering uh, on this cart. I'll put those in a Maybe I'll put those in a separate pile. Uh, let's just start going through this. So here's a Activision Stampede with a label. is actually in fairly good shape. 
Uh, that's not something you find with these Activision cartridges. The labels were in terrible shape, so that that's interesting. Um, Kaboom! It's kind of got kind of its label more typical of the Activision. There's a lot more worse out there. I'm gonna put those in an Activision pack. There we go. There's a there's a common Activision cart label. Chopper Command, classic. Love this game. Um, so. CBS video games. Uh, I've got an opinion on all these. I think CBS were some of the underrated games. Uh, they really pushed the technical ends of the 2600 and did some creative things. So I really do like the CBS games, and I'm surprised they don't go for a little bit more premium than they do, even the common ones. So, oh, those were there. So, Spider-Man, Parker Brothers Spider-Man, with a... Kind of a beat-up label, but I've never owned this, and I don't know the rarity of this, so we'll have to investigate that. <laughs> this is your, uh, this is the famous one, E.T. I did not get this out of a landfill. There is not dust on this. I got this out of that landfill. So, this is a silver label variant. I think they call it the silver label variants, and people collect by these variants, so uh, I try to keep all of my cartridges organized by variant type. And that's how sometimes I resell them. Um, here's another E.T. Raiders of the Lost Ark with no label on the front of it. Uh, it's a silver label. And a Vanguard silver label. Oh, Berserk. This is a common one that I usually sell with my units. Um, along with the... Oh, this is a Sears version of Pac-Man. I don't think that means much more, but it's worth investigating. Uh, it might be worth something to someone else. I'm not so sold on it. Um, let's see here. Night Driver, classic, uh, but it's a modern label. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I'm going to dodge them. Uh, early cartridge with a modern label on it. Missile can, same situation. Bowling. <laughs> this is one of the early games. And I don't know about you, but this is, my, in my opinion, it's one of, the f one of the best early games available. I mean, the game is just idiot simple, but you can just play it for hours. It, was, it reminds me of the Wii Bowling, or the Wii Bowling reminded me of this because it's so ridiculously simple yet addictive to play. Uh, a, I've always enjoyed playing bowling. Uh, the Atari um, Defender, another cartridge that I would usually just set, give away with a unit. Demons to Diamonds, and uh, probably an under underrated game in my opinion. Uh, it's still common though. Oh, well, that's interesting. A true common with the uh, the handwritten label on the front of it. Love it. Asteroids. Uh, and a Pac-Man with no label on the front of it. Okay, one of everyone's favorite. And the label's actually in decent shape. Activision Enduro. I'm not a huge fan of this game. It's not to be controversial. I don't know why. I'm not a fan of this, huge fan of this game. Uh, I recognize that people love it. It is considered one of Activision's classics. Meh. I just never got into it much. I was always more of a pole position uh, Atari Pole Position fan, and uh, sorry if that makes me a heretic. Let's see what we got here. This is a combat with no front label. Yeah, let's put it, put it in that pile there. So, a uh, CBS Gorf. Looks like we have some 7800 games. Which is what you get with one of these type of hodgepodges. I was told that this gentleman was bought and sold storage units. So this is how he came across it. And I would say, he, oh, and Ball Blazer. Oh, that's an awesome. That's one of my favorite games ever. But it never came out on the 2600. Although if you do go to and find some of the hacks and homebrews, you will find someone took a crack at doing a, seven, uh, a Ball Blazer. For the 2600 and they started getting into it and actually they got the grid working uh, but someone I guess they just stopped the development of it but the game is just uh, on the 2600 that they started they actually got it somewhat working 
Um, some commons here, berserk, asteroids, and a, and a super breakout. Uh, I got another 7800 game here. This one's food fight. Um, don't know much about 7800 games, but it's interesting. I've got a pile developing here of them in this box. Um, Space Shuttle. Great game. I have, this is actually on my list to play and complete over the next couple weeks. Um, I think the game's fantastic. It's a technical achievement game. I love those games that, in my understanding, is that uh, the game has gotten been designed around alternative use of the switches, where like the black and white switch and the difficulty switches can be used for all alternative uses. I love I love when the programmers do that, and Activision did that. Uh, I think they did that in um, was it Star Master as well, uh, which I which I love when they do those programming changes. Another 7800 Robotron 2084, and then uh, Space Invaders Common. Oh, what do we got here? <laughs> Video Olympics, an old one of the oldest games, and a, a classic, Yars Revenge. Absolute classic, everyone's favorite. I don't think there's anyone that doesn't like that game. And if you do not like it, you're wrong. I don't care what your opinion is. Miss Pac-Man. Um, I actually thought Miss Pac-Man was a a worthy successor to the terrible Pac-Man. Uh, Pac-Man was horrible in the 2600. Um, Miss Pac-Man. They did a. They actually put some effort work into, it, and I was pleased they did because it's not a. It's a pretty good game for the 2600. Um, Space Invaders Common. I got more an asteroids common and a spider fighter. Very popular Activision game with a rough label. Right down here. We got River Raid. Um, one of those in skiing Activision games. But River Raid, uh, another one of those games that I would classify as if you don't like River Raid, you're wrong. I don't know how you can not like that game. But then again, I don't like Enduro, so that makes me an odd duck. Um, freeway with someone's handwritten label on it. I love it. Uh, the, the front label is eh, average shape, but at least it's on there. Some of these Activision games, you just, the label is just horrible shape. All right, we got. A, I'm starting to develop a whole pile of 7800 games. Choplifter. I have no way of testing these either because I don't own a 7800. Jungle Hunt. This is a surprising 2600 game that a lot of people like. I never really got into it, but it's a considered a classic by a lot of people. So we'll put that in the pile. Silver pile. What else we got here? Warlords. Phenomenal. Classic. Good party game with the uh, if you have two um, if you have two paddle controllers two sets of paddle controllers this game is a phenomenal four player game the common pile and uh, outlaw which is an original one of the original games space attack this is where we get into the M series of games uh, the Mattel where they were trying to in basically knock off or bring and port all of the Intellivision games to the 2600. I think they did a great job. I really do. The, the the games that they ported, considering the technical difficulties or the technical differences between a 2600 and an Intellivision, they did a phenomenal job of porting those games. In fact, you know, I think when I was a kid, I owned uh, the baseball, the football, and a bunch of other of these Intellivision classics, uh, the, the M cartridge versions, because I just thought they were phenomenal. I don't like the cartridge case themselves. Um, so I'm actually got a Sword Quest Firewall, a uh, Fireworld with no front label. This is, uh, I believe, this is kind of a collectible to a lot of people. Um, this is not your um, standard. This, I think, this is the second Sword Quest game. So that's kind of a collectible sum. Uh, put that in a silver pile. Uh, what else we got? So I got another Warlords, and we have. Dodge them. Another dodge them. There. Oh, these collectible. That pile over there. Oh, here we get into the Sears telegames. 
Jet Plane Auto Racing and Slalom Skier. I don't know what the game this was supposed to copy. Uh, I never got into collecting the Sears stuff, but uh, people, it's a variant and people collect that. Uh, let's see here. Another CBS Wizard of War. Put that right there. And another CPS, CBS Solar Fox. All right. So Sears, Sears won Target Fun. Oh, just lost a label on this, and it is... Oh, it's Return of the Jedi. Um, I don't know what type of... Where this ranks on the scale of variants. Uh, not variants, but uh, collectability. But uh, I don't think I've ever owned this cartridge. Uh, I can re-glue re the label on there. That's not a problem. I'll put that in other Parker Brothers cartridges. Uh, more decent collectively. Uh, some of them were really good. Real Sports Football, a game I had as a kid I actually really enjoyed. Along with, I think the M football version is better. Um, Frogger and Donkey Kong, uh, Coleco and Parker Brothers. Um, I don't think there's a used 2600 sold without a copy of Combat Asteroids or Donkey Kong. And Frogger's right up there. And we, surprisingly, I think this is the first Coleco cartridges we have. I personally did not like Coleco cartridges. Your mileage, oh, but Donkey Kong Jr. Now that one I think is a collectible. Uh, it'll be interesting to fire that up. I've never owned this. So this is a first time I've ever owned this one. I was not a fan of the um, Coleco cartridges. Um... I think it's because when they started, their first cartridge that came out, if I'm not mistaken, was Donkey Kong. And the port, even though it was a technical masterpiece at the time, or a technical achievement, I hated that port. I thought it was an ugly game. It was about as bad as Pac-Man. It was personal opinion. And after that, I never really paid much attention to the Coleco cartridges. I didn't like them. Um, also, in my opinion, it, with video game ports... That is, that was the worst thing that they could have done for the 2600. And that, that, you know, for the time, that's, that's what was occurring. The video games, the arcades were, was, um, were hot items and they wanted to bring the arcade experience home. So they started porting arcade games and coming up with 2600 versions of them. But the 2600 had such limited technology that the games that came across were just terrible. Um, limited technology, and if you talk to the modern programmers who are going out and correcting the past sins of this, uh, the real uh, the real enemy for porting those arcade games was was memory constraints and memory was and, and cost constraints because memory was so expensive back then. When you have a, a 32k cartridge, which back in the day when they were porting these, they only could afford two or four k per cartridge. When you have 32k to work uh, work with, the, the games are phenomenal. But back in the day when they had to crank out cartridges in six weeks to three months and new titles and try to port these arcade games with limited cost constraints and time to make them, they just came out horrible. And I, and I, thought, the, I thought the Coleco series was horrible because of that. All right, moving on. And a Superman cartridge. A lot of people think this is um, a big end of this. I've never, I've never been a... Uh, Superman fan. I've played the game every once in a while, but people swear by it. They think it's a classic. All right, I'll go with that. Uh, Warlords, another Warlords. All right. Super skateboarding for the 7800. Interesting. I don't know much about it. Goes in the 7800 pile that, that I have there. And another 7800. Someone had a 7800. This is a Desert Falcon. I think I might already have a Desert Falcon in that pile, but we will see. And here's your Sword Quest Earth World. A lot of interesting stories behind that. And a Vanguard Silver Label. Put that pile over there. A Berserk Common. Laser Blast. <laughs> this game is... I don't think a lot of people like this game. Um... Because it's so mind-numbingly boring and rather easy if you know how to uh, beat the game. Uh, there's a spot on the, uh, the grid where you could just set your UFO and, 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 and never get shot. Um, and you just repeat that pattern. 
that's how I got my patch on this game. I, uh, back in those days, I think I burned a hole or a stripe in my parents' TV that um, that had one of the laser shot stripes because I just sat there and played it for hours and I, I think I burned it in. But maybe my memory's failing me. Home run. Horrible game. This horrible baseball game. No wonder they had to correct them. Wonder ones. I'm missing a lot of front labels, I'm noticing. Oh well. Um, Oh, yeah. Aforementioned Enduro, another copy of that. That's fine. Label's in good shape. Ooh, an Indy 500 with number. I think they only had these. They didn't do these in any other variants. You require the driving paddles for this. Um, this is actually a collectible. Uh, I don't think a lot of these uh, were made because you really can't play this without the, uh, the driving paddles. So that'll be interesting. See what else we got? Human Cannonball. Breakout. I'll put that in this pile. Uh oh, 7800 on the way again. Hat Trick. I'm going to have to look up these rarities. Uh, by definition, anything for 7800 was kind of rare because they just didn't sell many units of it. Midnight Magic. Um, great concept, disappointing game in my opinion. Uh, it doesn't play that well. It's rather slow. Um, I thought the original pinball was better. The original pinball is a classic. Uh, the original pinball is one I, I beat up a lot of joysticks on and played for hours. Midnight Magic runs a little slow, but it is a red label cartridge. It's my first red label variant of the group. Uh, missile Command Common. All right, so I don't know what this is. War Room. I don't even know if this is for the 2600 or the 7800 or what. That's to be looked into. I don't know what that is. I've never even heard of it. I'll put it right there. Air Sea Battle. And then we got a <laughs> ubiquitous Pac-Man. And Real Sports Baseball, Silver Label. And we got Circus Atari, Vanguard, and Pole Position 2 for the 7800. So let's, let's do that, let's do that, and then let's do that. Yeah, there's a pile of 7800s there. Another Stampede with the label in good condition. That's weird. Amadar. Never played the game. Don't know much about it. Parker Brothers. Labels lifting. Uh, where does that go? No, it goes right there. And a Sears version of Defender. Uh, I'll put the Sears right here. I think I got a Sears somewhere in that pile. Because I couldn't differentiate. Sorcerer. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Sorcerer. I don't know anything about it. In fact, I think maybe the recent, that's a nice artwork on the game. I don't know anything about it, though. I think maybe there was a recent high score challenge on Atari Age for this game. Uh, my memory, it's, I don't know what it is. I don't. So we're going to put it over here in the investigate pile. That's interesting. Battle Zone. Um, I think Battle Zone is underrated, the port for 2600. A lot of people compare this as to robot. They they dismiss the battle zone out of out of hand because they say robot tank was a better game. Uh, it may have been a better 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 game, but don't dismiss this port out of hand. This is one of the video game. It, it wasn't true to the real video game because I think the video game had vector graphics. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't a bad port. And it wasn't wasn't a bad game to play either. Um, it's just people just automatically dismissed it. Human Catabol. We still got more to go. One of my favorites, and then I beat a lot of joysticks over. I, I literally ripped a joystick in half playing pole position. Uh, I thought the port was, uh, considering the constraints at that time, um, the technical constraints, the, I thought the port was excellent for the time, and it was highly playable. Uh, your mileage may differ. Love that game, though. 
And then there's always Pitfall. Surprisingly, I was never a big Pitfall fan. Pitfall 2, however, was a masterpiece. And there's your River Raid. If you don't like it, you're wrong. Something's wrong with you. A Star Master, one of my personal favorites. Uh, labels about as good as any other Activision label for its time. Getting down to the nitty gritty here. No escape. Good a magic game. Um, in my opinion, a magic made the best games collectively. If you take an average quality build, uh, the graphics, the sound, the the playability. Uh, some of their games were a little repetitive, but they had some original games, and they always brought some great sound and video programming to their games. A Magic, uh, I, I think, a Magic games are on a level, another level. I really do. Um, and No Escapes is kind of a sought-after one, so that's good to get that one in the pile. Another 7800 Food Fight and a 2600 Berserk. And Parker Brothers Reactor, never played the game. Don't know anything about it. Well, I, I've heard of it. I just never played it. So, wherever my Parker Brothers pile is, right there. All right, what do we got here? I think we got one more cartridge in here. Let's, and the last one is, I don't see anything else. <laughs> last one is, I don't know what this is. It's an M Network game. It's an M Mattel game, which means it, it was pretty, probably pretty good, but I don't know what it is. We're going to have to plug that one and find out. Put that up there. So, with the cartridges, uh, it was advertised, the set was coming in as 96 cartridges. If you were counting at home, God bless you. I don't, 96, or I, now I don't remember, 96, 97, whatever I remember, whatever I said earlier. Um, if, the, if you counted and there's 96, 97 there, great. I wasn't counting, nor am I going to count. Uh, I had scored a heck of a deal on this, uh, and we're going to test all these in a later video. In fact, I think I'll probably do a later video to, to show how I break down and reorganize them because I know how I break down and reorganize them may differ from somebody else's. I'm not a collector of the cartridge, uh, cartridges. I like to sell some of these to fund fund my other things, like whoosh, the hardware, which we'll get to. Um, but I do recognize some of these cartridges have some value to collectors, and so therefore this is what I kind of sell to make money off of. And I don't I don't gouge the market for them. I it's not my style. So I'm going to be uh, I might be doing a whole separate video on how to my opinions on how to sort, restore, work with cartridges. Um, I'm going to have to do some investigation on these two right here. Sorcerer War Room. And i got a pile of 7800s. I know the Donkey Kong Jr. people might be interested in. Um, and the rest of these are uh, commons, which I am happy at the price I got them. And I can rework a lot of these cartridges and have a lot of options that'll do something with them to discuss in a, in a future video. Everything from I, I will sell some of these, especially some of the shabby common ones. Like if I've got a Pac-Man and a Space Invaders of these labels and asteroids, even terrible labels, but they function, then I just I consider them freebies and I put them in I put them in sets of five and I'll sell them with a rehab unit and just include them with the unit so uh, a person has something to take home and actually plug into the system. And ironically, usually these common cartridges are common for a reason and that they were the most popular. So they made tons of them. Um, so when people go online, just throw the cartridge in when you're selling your unit. Um, so um, with, on to the next video where we'll take a look at the hardware. So hardware, I think I'm just going to lump in hardware and joysticks with this. I don't see any other cartridges in this pile. Um... But the hardware, I'm wondering if there's a driving controller in here. If there's a driving controller, I really hit the mother load, mother load because uh, we got an Indy 500 in the pile there. And usually Indy 500s don't stray very far from their driving controllers. So I'm hoping there's a driving controller in here. Um, we got a couple of labels. 
loose labels down here from the cartridges. A Raiders and a Berserk. I'll throw that right there. So, got a manual. Um, I usually don't sell these with the systems um, because sometimes my systems are pieced together, to be honest. And it's not like you're having the original system with the original serial number. There's parts and there might be parts and a hodgepodge of parts at two different units, cases and a different unit's motherboard and a switch from another unit just to piece it together and uh, uh, get it out the door. So it's not like I sell these things as being brand new in the box or original. That's that that's not going to fly with my units. So anyhow, we got let's see what we got. Well, I got a Gemini paddle. Let's see if that's attached to anything. I don't know much about Gemini. I don't know much at all about them. And I think we got a nice... <laughs> this is pretty standard. <laughs> this is what you get when you pull joystick units out. Or just piles of joysticks. This is pretty standard. Alright, so I'm not going to do much detail analysis of these. Looks like I got a standard paddle there. What's this third one right here? This is this. This might be the other end of the other Gemini paddle. It might be a, a not a driving controller, but a, just a standard paddle. Paddle. A paddle. Are these probably all jitter. Uh, if your paddles jitter, you can fix them yourself quite easily. There's lots of YouTube videos on that. Turns them pretty much flawless. All right, um, so I don't see any driving controller in there for the Indy 500, which is too bad. But let's take a look at what else we got. <sighs> I saw Point Masters. I hated this thing. I hated these joysticks. This, in fact, is the style of joystick that I, earlier I mentioned, that I broke in half paying pole position. And this is the joystick that did it. Um... I had some of these joysticks for a couple of years. I thought they were pretty inexpensive at the time. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, the button on the back, I, I didn't like the ergonomics of the stick. It's too long of a throw. And that, it's, it's, it's kind of high in its gravity, high center gravity, that I'm using that term correctly. And so there's a long throw on here versus a compact little joystick like the Atari original joystick. Uh, there and also when you're gripping this for hours on end your hands start to hurt Then again if you're gripping any joystick for hours on end you probably should be going outside and doing something different But I digress. I am not a fan of these point masters I didn't find them to last too long because of the design flaws in them. They're pretty good looking and eh, they usually don't function by the way uh, a dissertation on joysticks uh, and paddles They're just not worth rehabbing my opinion um, especially if you're trying to rehab to resell, there's just, there's just no sense in, um, keeping them or trying to rehab. If they work and they work decently well, that's awesome. Keep it, sell it. If they don't work, uh, throw it out. Just move on. Not even worth parting them out. In my opinion, I'd love to hear some other collectors and rehabbers and what their opinions are on those. I throw them out. I, I don't. If they don't work, I throw them out. Exception, in, 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 exception of one thing. So here's an original Atari joystick. Looks like down here. Um, looks in okay shape. But you notice, and sure enough, I pulled this one out. What does every Atari joystick have that's used? It has chew marks. Somebody. Dogs, usually. Kids. Because I was eight years old at the time. They just gnaw on these things like they're chew toys. And so pretty much invariably, every boot, on if there's a boot on the joystick, this rubber boot, if there's a boot on this joystick, it's going to have chew marks. It just does. Every single one of them. Now, with that being said, if you find one of these joysticks that has very little or no boot marks, but the joystick doesn't work, strip the boot off of it, because keep that, that's a pretty rare item that you could use in some of your other joysticks. But yeah, there's always chew marks. Dog sits there for days and just chews in the living room back in 1982. I don't know if this thing functions, we'll test them all out. But that's likelihood, it probably doesn't. Uh, joysticks just don't stand up well. Gem sticks. Um, that looks like we got three of them. 
got one, we got two, and we got three. Uh, my opinion, I've never had a problem really with these. I think they're great cheap joysticks. If you get one in your sales um, and they work, and a lot of times I've found them surprisingly, they do. Uh, just, just resell them. They work. They work fine. And they feel a little cheap and chintzy, but I, I, I like them. I, I can't admit I don't. So here is a Pro System joystick. Someone had a 7800, I think. Because this usually went with the 7800s, although you could buy these separately. But based on the fact that I got a bunch of 7800s and this Pro System joystick. Uh, I think someone's got a 7800 somewhere in the past. Uh, that could be used for the 2600. So we're going to see how that works. It's exciting. I like them. Uh, someone's got a power supply. They had one power supply. That's okay. By the way, the new backup power supplies that they sell, uh, not backups, but these new, there's a couple of manufacturers, or at least I know of one, that sells uh, the retro company, sells modern um, the modern power supplies, I've never had a problem with them. I think they're solid. Your mileage may differ, but I've always found them to solid. And I, I would have no trouble putting them on a, even on one of my heavy sixer units. I really wouldn't. So I've got a bunch of labels floating around the bottom. Speedway 2, Sears game, and last, Sword Quest. Oh, here's a fire. Oh, that's awesome that I found that label because that's actually a collectible game. So, uh, let's get these out of here and for the final unveiling of the two Ataris. Um, get that out of there. Final unveiling. This is a four switch Woody. Dusty, dirty. Let me just do a quick check. And it appears that all four switches move as they should and function as they should. I see a case that's got some interesting color marks on the back, like paint. So, interesting color marks that, uh, like paint. Let me see if I can. That could be just, just grime. It feels like grime. Like, um, like this thing was sitting in, a, in an area where they had a lot of solvents being sprayed around, or who knows what happened to this thing. Um... But again, the switches appear to, they're not loose, they're not over stiff, they're not frozen. They might, they likely just work. Uh, it does have the RF cable still attached to it. Um, so for modern, what I'll usually do on when I uh, rehab these and, and resell them, is that uh, well, I'll wind up putting the modern uh, plug on there so you can hook it up to a modern coax. If the video is bad, if I test it, it's real simple. If the video is bad, 80% um, of the time in my experience, it just can be traced back to a, a bad RF modulator. When I say video is bad, um, if you get a screen um, that sometimes the screen acts funky, like there's a lot of uh, popping or RF interference or fuzziness, I will tinker with it, but I'm finding that it's just a bad RF modulator, and I don't tinker with it from that point on. I go ahead and I uh, rip the RF modulator out, and I mod it with an AV mod, a uh, composite mod, and that takes care of things. So this is a Black Vader. Real popular model. Let's see if the switches move. Uh, the switches, all four switches, seem to be in fairly good shape. Uh, who knows if they contact. Someone's had this open then because the black felt pads behind the switches are gone. So someone's had this open before. Um, it might be, might be this was a, re someone repaired it or at least thought they knew what they were doing when they opened it up. Um, Taiwan manufacturer, almost all of them are Taiwan manufactured from this era. And then, the, oh, this is one of those, I call it rare, it's not worth anything to anybody, it's not worth a premium. This is a Woody, 2600 Woody four switch that was actually manufactured in Sunnyvale. You'll get, you'll come across a lot of these, or at least, I don't know if you've come across a lot of them. You see right there, Sunnyvale. 
Uh, I don't think these are worth anything more to a collector. You have to be really pushing it to be interested in a horse switch Woody from Sunnyvale. I mean, you really have to be into the variants. I'm... I haven't run across anyone that does, is, cares about the four switch woodies from Sunnyvale. So, both on the face, I looked through, looked over both of these while I was yatting away with you, and the cases look in decent shape. I don't see any major uh, chip or gouge marks or pieces missing. Sometimes you'll just have pieces of the plastic missing, which is not a big deal. I have replacement cases anyhow. Um, I think both of these are in... Uh, I would say the chances of them functioning are at least 60%, fully functioning at least 60%. We're gonna we're gonna hook them up and find them up, uh, find out in later videos. So we got one more cartridge, another berserk label. I'll throw that over there. And it looks like I have got some work to do. We've got our work cut out for us. So I was just gonna document this series. I think the biggest trouble I'm going to have is to uh, put all these back in a box and store it away somewhere until I have time to really go through it with you in detail. So that'll be future videos, though. Thanks, and have a nice day.